Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I wish to lend my support to the resolution submitted to this Honorable House by the Minister for Finance to establish the Anti-Crime Initiative Fund in keeping with Section 22.1 of the Public Finance Management Act, Cap 1501. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member for Caswis East and Prime Minister and Minister for Finance stated clearly that the two major priorities of the budget, which was recently approved by this Honorable House, were crime and health. The Minister for Finance delivered a brilliant budget, Mr. Speaker, masterstroke. This budget, Mr. Speaker, is designed to continue St. Lucia's impressive economic recovery with all things being equal, we should surpass the pre-COVID GDP achieved in 2019. In addition, Mr. Speaker, an impressive social program has been presented with emphasis on education, health, and crime. And this is all being undertaken within a macroeconomic framework of prudent fiscal policy. No amount of deception, deflection, and distraction on the part of the misinformation barons can detract from this excellent budget, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the budget for fiscal year 2023-2024 provides for an increase in the operating budget for the police from an, an approved budget of 47.97 million in 2022-2023 to 49.84 million, Mr. Speaker. As part of this increase, Mr. Speaker, an additional 15 police constables are to be hired in crime management. In addition, the government, Mr. Speaker, is now embarking on a major infrastructure program for police station. The Viewfort Police Station is to be rehabilitated after being neglected over the last five years and a brand new Northern Divisional Headquarters is currently under construction in Grosile. This government, Mr. Speaker, is walking the talk and not merely uttering empty talk. Mr. Speaker, notwithstanding the increased allocations being made to crime under the budget, there is always need for more resources to deal with this scourge. This resolution, Mr. Speaker, will allow for the establishment of an anti-crime initiative fund for the purpose of providing monies to execute an anti-crime initiative, including crime prevention, law enforcement, and other measures for national security. The sources of funds identified for the anti-crime initiative fund are as follows. A, in relation to, to the Proceeds of Crime Act 3.04, two on the section nine, cash forfeited, three on the section 10, the proceeds of a sale of forfeited property, on the section 14, the proceeds of a charging order, and of course, on the section 17, money paid in satisfaction of a confiscation order. Additionally, in B, sums referred to in paragraph 8 that have been paid into a bank account approved by the Accountant General in the charge of the Attorney General. The funds cannot be predicted with any degree of certainty and are not included in the estimates of revenue and expenditure. The Public Finance Management Act does, however, provide a mechanism for the use of such funds through Section 22 of the aforementioned Act. It is to be noted, Mr. Speaker, that the source of these funds are all related to the successful prosecution of criminal activity and is therefore only fitting that such monies be used for anti-crime initiatives. 
the accountability framework for reporting the use of such funds are clearly detailed in section 23 of the Public Finance Management Act. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, given those facts that not even the best political liar can refute, I therefore give my full support to the resolution. I yield the floor, Mr. Speaker.